This is the Apollo moon lander, one of the most important and expensive spacecraft ever built. It also kind of looks like a bunch of tinfoil crumpled around some metal poles, doesn't it? I can kind of see why some people might think this was built on a movie set instead of a laboratory. So why does it look like that, and what's the deal with all the tinfoil? Well, space is merciless. It's a battlefield unlike anything found on Earth. You can very quickly go from boiling hot to unfathomably cold just by moving from sunlight to shadow. Beyond the wild temperature swings, spacecraft are relentlessly bombarded by solar radiation and cosmic rays. These forces degrade materials, interfere with electronics, and could be lethal to human beings. As if that wasn't enough, everything in space is under a constant barrage of micrometeorites. Tiny bullets that can puncture a spacecraft's exterior or damage exposed instruments. So our vehicle actually needs some protection from all of these hazards, and that is where the foil comes in. Now, you might be wondering, if the spaceship is already made of metal, then what good could wrapping it in foil possibly do? Well, metal alone is not enough to protect delicate instruments or electronics. First of all, metals are excellent conductors of both heat and cold. Think of the pans in your kitchen. They don't protect your food from heat, instead, they transfer heat into your food very effectively to cook it. In addition to that, a solid metal spacecraft doesn't actually block radiation very well on its own. While the metal body can protect astronauts from micrometeorites, anything exposed to space would still be vulnerable. Early space probes didn't have any protection against the relentless conditions of space. Without proper insulation, they overheated, electronics failed, and materials degraded rapidly. So it became clear that if spacecraft were going to survive long term, they needed something better. And this is where the foil comes in. As those early years of space exploration rolled on, NASA refined their techniques for protecting spacecraft from the cosmic environment, and they found inspiration in a common item. They looked to the thermos, which is actually just a common brand name for an invention called the vacuum flask. Those Stanley Cups use the same technology, you might think that the reason your thermos keeps hot drinks hot and cold drinks cold is because it's packed with insulation. But in reality, the thick walls of the vacuum flask are filled with nothing. Hence, the vacuum. When you remove the air between two materials, you remove the ability for heat to travel between. Just like in our frying pan example, physical contact with something dense is the most effective way to transfer heat. Heat moves through stuff, but when we take that stuff away, heat transfer slows to a crawl. Now the reason your thermos or Stanley Cup is so bulky is because the wall needs to withstand the pressure difference between the vacuum inside and the pressure of the Earth's atmosphere outside. Think of a balloon. When you have two different pressure levels separated by a flimsy wall, then it's likely to pop. Now let's go to space. Up here, Everything is a vacuum, so we are no longer worried about the differences in pressure, which means we can recreate the powerful insulation of the thermos without the need for chunky walls. All we need to do is put a reflective layer on the outside of our spacecraft that will bounce all of the visible light and invisible radiation that the sun is kicking out. And then, as long as there's just a little gap of empty space between that reflective layer and our spacecraft, then the heat can't get in. Sounds pretty simple, and it is. In the mid-70s, when NASA was rushing to complete their Voyager probes in time to hit an ultra-rare planetary alignment, technicians put the final touches on their work by wrapping certain wires on the spacecraft with regular old grocery store shelf aluminum foil. And those probes are still working 50 years later and 15 billion miles away from the Earth all of a sudden, that foil is starting to look pretty smart, right? And just like a thermos, this works both ways. Hot drinks, hot, cold drinks, cold. 
So when something like a planet comes in between the spacecraft and the sun, and we pass into a shadow where the temperature quickly drops to the coldest level that's physically possible, then the heat from the computer systems, or life support, is kept inside the spacecraft. This is the principle that led to NASA's development of a special material called multi-layer insulation, or MLI, aka the tinfoil. What's interesting about this material is that it looks like metal, but it's actually layers of metal and plastic, and even something called metallized plastic, with each layer serving a very specific purpose. Here's something that will blow your mind. The foil on most spacecraft looks like gold, right? Well, it's not. The outermost layer isn't even metal. It's a specialized plastic named Captain. It has the unique characteristic of remaining stable through a wide range of temperatures, from negative 269 degrees Celsius up to 400 degrees Celsius, this material will not crack or melt. And then typically what you'll see underneath that is a layer of aluminum foil. The slight amber tint of the captain is what makes the aluminum appear like gold. But not all spacecraft are gold though, some are silver, so what's the difference? Well, let's flip back to our Apollo lander for a second. Think about what it would be like to land on the moon. Imagine all of the dust and rock that gets kicked up like landing a helicopter in the desert. The aluminum foil would get shredded. Putting the captain on the outside increases the durability of the MLI, even if it makes the aluminum slightly less reflective. Now, if we look at something totally different from a moon lander, a space telescope like Hubble or James Webb, they both have silver foil. These telescopes live far out in Earth's orbit, empty space where they don't have to worry about getting roughed up. So their designers were able to prioritize reflectivity over durability. That means the aluminum foil is on top of the captain, making this MLI more effective at bouncing back heat from the sun. Here's a familiar image from the launch of a SpaceX Falcon 9. Once the rocket clears Earth's atmosphere and starts flying through space, we get a close-up view of something that looks like a silver bag around the engine. That is also MLI. The aluminum foil protects all of the engine's fuel lines from the heat of the nozzle and prevents the rocket fuel from boiling away. Below that outer layer of aluminum and captain is another special plastic called mylar, which is known for being incredibly strong, lightweight, and insulating. Insulators trap heat in, reflectors keep heat out. Beneath that outer shield is going to be several more layers of plastic and metal that contribute both insulation and reflection. But in between each layer is another critical element of this insulation, a white fiber mesh, like a net. This ensures that the layers never touch and slows down heat transfer from the outside of the MLI to the inside. Regardless of which plastic insulator or metal that's used, MLI can range anywhere from 10 to 60 layers. The exact number is tailored to the specific needs of each mission. And the last thing that you might notice is that there are holes in the layers. And that might appear like a problem, but it's actually a necessity. Because when the spacecraft is on Earth, air is going to get trapped in between the layers of insulation and the spacecraft. Then, after liftoff, when the spacecraft enters the vacuum, all that trapped air is going to want to escape into space. Matter always flows from high pressure to low pressure. So you need to give the air an escape route, or else the MLI will blow up like a balloon. As long as the tiny holes in the different layers are staggered, they can still let air out without letting heat in. And when it comes to micrometeorites, the multiple layers help to absorb the impact of high-speed space debris, which could otherwise penetrate exposed surfaces. This technique for protecting our most important spacecraft is just as effective today as it was back in the 1960s. Take a close look at the Firefly Blue Ghost. America's most successful moon lander since Apollo. It launched in 2025 with the same gold foil MLI wrapped around the entire body. Now, it might not look like science fiction, but the science fact is that wrapping spaceships in foil 
is actually the best defense we've got against the merciless environment of outer space.